Hey everybody, welcome back to This Is Us Tuesday. We have with us today a special guest, Emily. <laughs> and the last video we asked you guys to send us a, any questions that you would have for her or Stephanie, and most of the questions came in for Emily, so we're gonna let her share her response to those questions of what things were like when I was in prison and she was out and about. And before I get into that, I'm gonna kind of go through a couple subjects or topics that we didn't cover in the last video just to kind of make sure that everything's covered. So as we told you guys, two out of the three cases we had taken a plea on and had been sentenced on. And there was the third case with the Rhodes brothers that I was fully intending on fighting and had you know all of the proof that I needed, the signatures from the two brothers, you know, that they knew what was going on, and I was going to fight that. However, I was already incarcerated and in prison, and the county that that charge was in came to me and offered me a deal that basically I had to pay the restitution for that case, but there would be no additional prison time. So at that stage of the game, it wasn't worth fighting. What's another $50,000 restitution on top of everything else? You know, instead of me fighting it and already seeing how the justice system, you know, was so slanted against us and running the risk of having to serve additional time in prison. It just wasn't worth it. While I was in prison, I had to go to court, take the plea deal, and then just basically plead guilty and say I will pay the $50,000 back to the brothers. The other thing that was going on when I was in prison that was really a, a huge blessing is I was able to get into a cooking class in, in school and earn good time. And the class was only scheduled to last so long and I was very fortunate because my instructor's name, I don't remember his last name but I do remember his first name was Jason, which is the same name as my brother that I had lost. And he was very nice and a group of myself and one or two other individuals, you know, we were always, you know, trying to do well in the class. We studied, we helped clean up, we offered to do different things, we volunteered, and he could see that we weren't in there to cause, you know, any problems or trouble. And so he kind of talked to me throughout the course and, you know, asked a little bit about what I was in there for and how long I was there and stuff like that. And the huge blessing that I that I got out of this is that he worked with me and even though I was supposed to be done with the class, I had calculated out how long I could take the class to maximize and get the most amount of good time to be able to get home to my family. And so even though I was technically done with the course, he let me stay the exact amount of time that I needed to so that I would get credit for the amount of time that I was in school and it would all work out to where I would get the credit and then be released at a certain time. So I'm so thankful that, you know, that there were people in there like that, that, you know, could tell that I needed some type of help. <laughs> now I'm going to turn things over to Stephanie and Emily and let them answer questions and maybe talk about and answer or just share a few stories with you mm -hmm. about kind of life outside of prison and what was going on with them and keep in mind Emily was between the ages of 12 to 14 years old you know at the time that she's going to talk about. So I got a few questions. One was were you sad or angry with us? I don't <laughs> I wouldn't say I was sad or angry with you. I think I was more just scared and just really uncertain of how basically our life was going to go and how like what it was going to mean for my life because like you said I was between the ages of 12 and 14 so all I was concerned about at that time was me and how <laughs> it was going to you know affect my life and where we were going to live and just how it was going to affect me with school and friends and all that kind of stuff so I don't think I was ever angry or mad because I know they always were trying to just do what they could to make sure that we were in the best place that you know we could be as far as where we we're living and friends and all that but it was just a scary time. Okay, how do you like editing these videos? So besides all my dad's 
Um, and then, um, so you know, he you know. says it about a hundred times per video that I have to go through and click out. No, but I kind of enjoy it because it's a little bit interesting to me because I'm actually learning things that I didn't know. Even how he just said the thing about his instructor's name. I don't remember ever hearing that. And again, I may have been told that way back when, but I don't remember and... I'm just learning some things that, like I said, I either don't remember or maybe I never knew about because they probably didn't tell me every single thing that they talked about. Or And the next one was, how do the boys feel about us sharing our story? Do you know how they feel? Well, I mean, I can't speak for them, but I think from what I've gathered from both of them is I don't think that either one really care. I think it's more especially Joey well, and Jay, they just think it's more cringy that <laughs> you guys are on social media at all. Like they just think they're I old know. and goofy. They don't. Jay had made the comment, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. I don't. Think I mean, Jay is a more private person. Like, I don't know. Joey just, kind of is too though. Yeah. He hide, hides us from his friends. Yeah. <laughs> Jay and Joey are both more private. I'm more the type of person that doesn't really care what people know. So that was what there was from their, I guess, last video. And then I had asked you guys over on Instagram. So if you guys follow me on Instagram and had asked a question, this is where your question will get answered. So the first one was, how long was he in for? What did he do? How did you deal with it? And they said that they're asking because my dad, and then it cuts off. He was in for 18 months. Um, what did he do? They explained how he got, what he got charged with and basically the whole thing around that in the first few videos. So if you go back, it's kind of hard to explain in one little question because it's a long story. That's why there's multiple episodes. Um, and how did I deal with it? Um, I would say... I don't know. That's a hard question to answer. She got a babysitting job. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like we just all kind of just took it day by day and just tried <clears throat> to make the best we could of it, even though it was a crappy situation. And I don't really think there was any specific thing. You that kept we playing did. soccer. Yeah, I just think staying in your activities. Yeah, what I was gonna say is like, there's not one specific thing that yeah really helped. It's just. I think trying to just, like I said, make the best of what I still was doing, playing soccer, being around family, being around family, yeah. friends, still just kind of trying to just do everything. How old was I at the time and did any of my friends talk with me about it? So like my dad said, I was between the ages of 12 and 14 and at when we lived in our old town and they had first gotten arrested and stuff, I think you had mentioned this previously that some of the kids had saw, well their parents had saw like in news articles that they had gotten arrested and we lived in a small town so their parents talked and then you know the kids found out and me and Jay were on a bus one day and we were on our way home and some kids that rode our bus were like making fun of us and saying stuff and Jay was always the one to like just ignore it when he was little anyways and I was always like if somebody was saying something about my parents or my family I would just get really mad. So I had kind of like told this girl off and we, me and Jay moved and I told him like don't talk to them anymore so we just got off the bus and I remember walking home and I remember that I was wearing a jean jacket because <laughs> I always used to wear jean jackets which is really cringy but they're coming back in style now apparently. Um, and then did my friends talk about it? So then there was some friends, um, I remember when we moved to like to our new town that they knew um, and some kids were... They were curious but they didn't really care because they just kind of wanted to be friends with me for me and they didn't really I don't think cared or even really grasped what was going on or just kind of didn't pay much attention to it but then there were some people that of course were like just thought it was weird and would always kind of ask questions about it I remember specifically a friend who lived in our neighborhood and I think it was more her mom kept kind of poking and prodding the issue and didn't want her to be friends with me. So I don't think it ever came down to it being the kid. It was more the parent that was kind of leery and didn't want yeah. their kid around me because <laughs> of it. I don't think it was ever necessarily my friends. Uh, were you embarrassed that your friends would find out about your dad? So I don't say, wouldn't say I was ever embarrassed just because I know that my dad's not a bad person. So I think more it was just weird um, because I, at the time, like I said, I was really concerned about <laughs> something so bad myself. 
And when my parents would kind of try to explain to me, like I remember when you would try to explain to me what he did, I didn't even really care at the time to hear, to hear it, it yeah. or anything. Like I guess I just wanted to like accept what was happening and just kind of almost like ignore it. Like, okay, when's he gonna be home? Yeah. And just like not sit there and think about all the details, you know? And so I wasn't necessarily embarrassed. It was just that people would ask and I didn't even have a ton of knowledge. So I would yeah. kind of just be like, oh, I don't really know. You know, it was, he sold insurance and I just kind of like almost blow it off and just not really talk about it. And like I said, the friends that were friends with me and enjoyed hanging out with me and liked me for me didn't ask anymore about it. It was those people that had parents, like I said, I think that were just really persistent about like kept asking questions. And eventually, obviously, didn't hang out with those people anymore. Was it scary for you as a kid when you when your dad went to prison? So this is probably the funniest question because I think we were all really scared because we did not think my dad was going to be able to, <laughs> well, I didn't. Me and Jay at the time were like, dad is not <laughs> the type to go to prison or be able to like, <laughs> hold his own. <laughs> it's kind of like in Good Girls, um, if you guys saw that guy that looks really nerdy and he found out he was gonna go to prison, so he got like all these tattoos on his face <laughs> just so that he like looked like he killed somebody and he like just looked really scary, but he actually wasn't scary at all. <laughs> How was it for you at the time and have any of you had therapy? <laughs> no. Have you had therapy? No. <laughs> we went you guys went one time to a psychologist that grandma his mom was able to take him to through her work insurance at the time yeah and it was just one visit and um, she wrote a letter for the clemency binder when when that one it was yeah, yeah and that was interesting because how old was jay at the time um, he was oh, about was seven. Okay, so he was about seven, and I can remember Jay was always one to like do things really young and be really mature for his age. And I had remembered <laughs> they were asking if he was like wetting the bed at night, and he w thought that was so offensive <laughs> and was like went off about it and was like, I don't know why she asked me that. And I can remember, do you remember that? Yeah, he was so and mad. The kids that didn't <laughs> want to go back to her. I mean, I don't know if it would have helped, but. We didn't go. And it, yeah, we didn't want to go. Not like we could have afforded to go, you know, and kept going on her insurance. Somebody <laughs> said, were you ever disappointed in your dad for going to prison and how did it impact your relationship with him? So this is an interesting question because I feel like me and my dad's relationship at the time, <laughs> do you want to talk about that at all? About like <laughs> when I was a teenager, me and my dad would butt heads a lot of time, but we also, he was really big into my soccer and went to all my soccer events and my mom was always really supportive in there but she had no clue what was going on as far as I didn't understand the game yeah if I asked her you know because I played when I was little but no just for you like didn't. the snacks yeah you didn't she <laughs> maybe went when I was probably like in third grade just one yeah okay. so my dad was a soccer player and knew stuff and would be you know really critical on me which helped me even though sometimes I didn't like it but you know I would get them playing and he would tell me what I need to work on what you know I did right and good and bad and my mom would just be like oh yeah you did good you know she was just one of those parents that said you did good even if you just like laid on the ground or something <laughs> so that was kind of hard because I missed having like somebody that knew what was going on because it was her and then my grandma going and my grandma I knew more about soccer than oh, you, yeah, I'm sure. but she wasn't going to tell me right. what I did wrong. Right. You know what I mean? Because she was my grandma. So your grandma, again, is somebody that probably always is just going to be like, good job. Right. Even if you sat on the bench and ate <laughs> snacks. That's another thing. My soccer trips, usually, like I said, my parents used to take me. My dad was really into my soccer. So my grandma, my dad's mom, when she was here, she stepped up and would go with my mom. So I always used to say it looked like I had two moms on the <laughs> soccer trips because that's probably what it looked like. So my mom was actually driving us, was it on, wasn't it on the way home? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Right. We had to go to, was it Chicago? Yeah. And I had never drove and on the way home, we thought we were going the right way, but we ended up in Wisconsin instead of coming back to Illinois. Yeah, so we were on our way back from a soccer tournament and instead of coming the opposite way, she had us up in Wisconsin. 
we were joking. We we're like, well, I guess we could get some cheese or stay for <laughs> like the what was it? Dog races. Right. Yeah. Somebody said at the time, did you have a full understanding of what all was happening and why? I would say no, like I had said earlier, just because I didn't really care to know all the details. Like I said, I just was like trying to focus on just, you know, getting from point A to point B, getting, just basically getting done with it. And I think that's kind of how we all were, right. you know, there were times where when she was working, Jay was at home with me and Joey, and Joey was always into his video games, so he was always like easy for me to watch, and I was supposed to be watching them. And it was being, summertime. Yeah. And you were supposed to be the one to get them up and get them breakfast and <coughs> make them lunch and feed them, make sure they ate. Well, I would stay up late talking on the phone to like my friends, boys, and was up late, and then I would be sleeping, and it'd be like noon, and I'd hear Jay like upstairs banging on like the door to the basement because my room was downstairs, and he'd be like, "Em, I have lunch ready for you and Joey," and he would have like cooked like I don't know a frozen pizza or like chicken nuggets or something, and then I'd come up and I'd eat, and then I'd go back downstairs, and he'd be like, "Do you want to play?" I'm like, "No, get away." <laughs> No, get away, go back upstairs. So pretty much Jay ran the house. Like yeah. he cooked for them. And he would yell He did at me. laundry and he chipped in. He he was the one that wiped Joey's butt when he Joey basically did. tried to parent me because he'd be like, Get up here and get your laundry switched over. Mom's gonna be mad. <laughs> so you guys have kinda asked how this has affected, you know, the kids with me going to prison. And I would say uh, on Jay's behalf you know, he had to step up and kind of be the, the little man in the house. And, you know, he would probably say, you know, if he was here, that he didn't really have as much of a childhood because he did, you know, mature and, and do things a lot younger than what all the other kids did. And still to this day, you know, that's kind of how he's lived his life um, with his jobs and school and things like that. He's very focused and driven, but almost you know to the extreme and so that that's probably affected him in that way probably the way that it affected joey with being so young um, he spent a lot of time with my dad at the time spent a lot of time on video games which he's kind of carried forward and still does today but you know being on food assistance and with stephanie have to work and being a stay-at-home mom with three kids you know they didn't always eat the healthiest and so when he was at home with my dad he would just be, you know, eating a lot of chips and junk food and stuff that was in the oven and stuff like that. And so as a little kid, he was, you know, usually overweight. And, you know, not too long ago, Joey kind of got a, a little more active and, you know, aware of what he was putting in his body. And, you know, he's, you know, really changed if you guys have seen him before and then seen him after. And so I would say, and we've talked to him about that. And we've both actually apologized to him, you know, for the stuff that we kind of, you know, was our responsibility and things that we fell short on um, in that regard. And so he he understands it now with being 17 and he obviously is old enough now to make his own choices as far as the foods that he selects and what's he what he decides to eat and stuff like that. But, you know, as a parent, you know, that's something that you don't, you're not proud of. But that is something that I would say that affected him at that age um, that he kind of went through and carried forward in life as well. And when we talked to him, it was just a few months ago probably when we started all this. And he said, you know, he was proud of, he said, I'm proud of you, Dad. He said, you took one for the team and it made him who he was, is today. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what he said. Like he said he would have done the same thing. He's, he doesn't have any like anger or anything. I think they have a couple other stories or things that happened while I was in prison that they want to share. So I was working at the doctor's office and I was at the time I was making $10 an hour and I was super excited about that because to work fast food I would have made way less than that and I didn't have to work in a fast food place so I was super happy because I had better hours than if I worked drive through and I thought oh I'm making really good money and one summer, M had somehow met a lady in the neighborhood who was a nurse, and she had two kids, and she asked them to babysit. And you weren't even much older than her one son that yeah. she had, I didn't feel like. 
I was a couple. I was I was older. He was just as tall as me because <laughs> he was short. Yeah, I was yeah. really short, and he was really tall. And he would like try and pick me up and stuff. <laughs> well, he would. So she would go babysit for one night, and the lady paid her like eighty dollars. And I was like, oh my gosh. Well, I would babysit them like the day she worked. I would go there yeah. or whatever. And, and then, I was like, you're making more than what I'm making driving to the doctor's office. <laughs> having to pay taxes and stuff and gas and you know pack food and all that and we'd come home and she'd be like here you go <laughs> i was like oh that's okay okay thanks so basically you know i was the breadwinner in our house for <laughs> right. a little period of time <laughs> she bought the toilet paper <laughs> so somebody had also asked um if we were able to visit and they had kind of talked about that in the last video and how we felt about the visits so I can remember that my mom obviously never wanted to miss a visit. Now being older and being married, like I can't imagine, like obviously you'd wanna go anytime you could and even obviously when you weren't allowed to. But she always wanted to go and I can remember wanting to go because we wanted to see my dad obviously, but I remember like how long was it that could stay there? Like, like one hour. Only one hour? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I thought it was like a four hour visit. No, but it took us 45 okay. minutes to get there and 45 minutes back. Yeah, so I so. think like, especially for me and Jay, because we just would always, I remember, talk about how long it was. <laughs> and I think it was like the fact that, you know, when you're a kid, you don't want to drive 40 minutes in the car and then like it would take, well, and it would take so long to like go through security. And I remember they had to like touch my bra, which I thought mm -hmm. was so weird because like I had, I was into watching like prison shows and stuff. So I was like, what in the world? I'm getting like shaken down, you know? <laughs> it was so weird because I was just, you know, at the age wearing a bra and they're like, just shaking me down. It was so strange. I didn't know you were watching prison shows. <laughs> yeah. I always have watched prison shows. When you were 12? I don't know if when I was 12, but I've always been Parent interested. Parent of the year right here. <laughs> and <laughs> that's nothing. I watched like Jersey Shore and a lot of trash. Okay, TV. don't. No. Anyways. <laughs> Prison shows would have probably been better, but it just took so long to like get in, and then you had to walk far, and like it was a long time to get in, you know. Yeah, and then we had to wait for him, and then like yeah. the visit seemed so long because all you could do is sit at the table. Probably like dreadful for you guys. Yeah, in, in a way too. Cause yeah, it wasn't like not that you didn't want to see him, but you probably it wasn't an enjoyable yeah. environment. They talked about the lady peeing. Like there was a lot of different things like that that just the environment was kind of sketchy and just weird and yeah. it was kind of scary to me too because I remember at the time like I didn't know you know the other people that were in there because you're in a <laughs> visitation room like yeah. I remember looking around and this might sound bad but kind of looking around like is somebody gonna yeah you know, do something crazy because I didn't I knew my dad wasn't like a violent person but you don't know who else is in right. the room so you're kind of like <laughs> it just was kind of like scary to you know, like who's in here. So one of the funny stories that um, Joey had whenever he was in prison was when he went to kindergarten, his teacher said Joey told her that his dad was in Hawaii um, shooting deer with the girls with the coconut boobs. And I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't shoot deer. He's not a hunter at all. And I didn't know where he got that girls with the coconut boobs from. <laughs> well, like, I think it that? was like, me, me and Jane were talking about like Hawaii stuff. So yeah. he like, I don't know, maybe just picked that up and thought of that, but he just always liked to think of like the most yeah. random things to like entertain people. But that's probably where my dad wishes he would have been. Yeah. Been. yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's all we're gonna cover today. Thanks for joining us on this special edition with our special guest of This Is Us Tuesday and hope you join us next week. And just as a heads up, we're kind of be kind of winding down my time in prison and talk to you about, you know, the release and, and how that all went down. And we will continue our story next week. Thanks everybody. Bye. <laughs> if you like what you saw, thumbs up. We have a amazing guest, Emily. <laughs> Not <laughs> Not so amazing. And I thought I heard you fart. That's why I well, started laughing. Oh. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back. I was laughing while you did that. My face was scrunched up like that.
Hey everybody, welcome back. This is a special edition of This Is Us Tuesday with our guest, Emily. <laughs> okay, maybe <laughs> not so. Hey everybody, welcome to back. It's gonna be a long time. Uh oh, now it's tilted. Do you see it? Does that look right or not? There was a couple things I wanted to cover. Bruh. You just reset the same thing. <laughs> when you start dancing, it threw me off. The other thing that was going on as I, as you, Just call 